This is the patch and release video for version 4.0 of Poyomi Toon Shader. It's available right now as of August 23rd to all $5 plus patrons. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to check that out. For everyone else, it's available for free in two weeks. There's quite a few changes in this patch, and like every week, you can check out the full list of patch notes on the Trello. I'll leave a link in the description below. So, uh, the last patch was 3.5, and this one's 4.0. That might seem like a big jump, but there's been pretty significant changes since, I guess, 3.4. 3.5 was potentially going to be 4.0, but it didn't have everything in place that I wanted. So 3.5 and this patch are kind of all together, like the 4.0 patch. So everything in all of your shaders that were from 3.5 will still work in 4.0. But if you're upgrading directly from anything below 3.5, you may have issues. And... They're not really hard to deal with. They're just issues. So because it's transi or because it's like transition to using keywords again, your keywords for older materials are not gonna be um, they're not gonna be active because it didn't have keywords back then. So anything before 3.4 is going to, or I guess anything 3.4 and below is going to have issues with the update but it's really easy to fix all you need to do is just select the materials you can multi-select them anything you want to update and then just change it to standard and then like just any standard and then change it back to poyomi tune default whatever whatever you want to use and then that should reset all the keywords that's going to happen to everyone that's coming from an older patch and it'll be really obvious because your lighting won't work at all and maybe your metallic won't work. Things just aren't going to work. So just switch back and forth and you'll be good to go. All right, on to the actual patch notes. So let me just pull up the notes again. So let's go. The first thing is Panosphere can now support skyboxes or cube maps. So you can see here, this is just a cube map. And the, like, rotating a cube map is really different from rotating a texture or, like, panning a texture. So it still supports panning in a way, except it's more of a rotation now than a pan. So before, you would just pan, like, if you panned along X, it would look like it was rotating on X. That's no longer the case. So if I pan along X, it's actually going to be panning along the x-axis, which would be this red one right here, so left and right from my perspective. So if that was like an axis for a wheel, the wheel would be turning the way this is. So you can see that rotating. And it's like that for everything. So if you select Y, Y is the green axis here, so it's straight up, so it's going to be rotating around that, so kind of like that or which maybe in the opposite direction but yeah and then Z is gonna be straight back so it's gonna be rotating like this around the blue one and that's how that works and you can use any cube map you just turn the rotation off um, so you can use whatever And the old settings for Panosphere are still there, so you can still use those if you want. Just with regular textures. Controlled lighting has received a few changes, so if I go to... Let me just go to the materials for this avatar. I don't think I can show it very well, just because it's still kind of... It's hard to compare in a default world like this, but... A lot of the time when you have lighting, like if you have, say, like red shadows in a world or like the, the surroundings are red in any way, like even brown because it has a lot of red in it, you may have found that if you had skin shadows, they would actually kind of get even more red. So the issue there was that 
sort of like the ambient lighting in the world was pushing the shadows into an even more like red state. And for a lot of the worlds in VR chat, like the pug or room of rain, they have really like brown, they're brown and that has a lot of red in it. So you would get issues. So the way controlled lighting works now is that it kind of doesn't take that into account. It's just based off of the direct lighting. So in this scene, for example, you have like just a white light that comes down and then the shadow color is not just basically, it's just being ignored entirely with uh, controlled lighting and you still have the old lighting. So you can go to natural and do that if you want. And just a pro tip for anybody who is having trouble getting their shadows correct in a world just because every world has different lighting. So you may find that your shadows appear like way too dark in some worlds and you don't know how to fix that. Something you can do for that is if you go into your window up here and then you go to lighting and then settings, you'll pull up this lighting window and the environmental lighting is actually what controls the darkness of your shadows. So you can either go to color and then just set that to black or you can go to skybox and just lower your intensity. So this is about as dark as shadows will ever be in the game. Or it is, it's zero, there's zero light. So you can actually set this down and then set, set up your shadows in that state. And then if they look good there, then they'll never go darker than that. So if I go into my face and body, for example, and then I go into, light and shadow. If I increase the shadow strength, that's as dark as they will ever appear. And I'm not really happy with that. The reason you get in these jaggy edges is because of the uh, attenuation. It's just the shadows casted by Unity. I'm gonna leave them on. And I'll just go to somewhere where I'm comfortable. So I want my shadows to be around there. And then on my face, I want them to be slightly lower. So they're still present, but not like super obvious. And you should be able to get pretty good shadows like that. My hair is a little bit dark, so I would just change that, but I'm not gonna sit here and go through all my lighting settings. So let's continue. One more lighting thing is that the, uh, the lighting color before used to alter your shadow positions where instead of just changing the color of the lighting on the model so if i go to red when i used to just when i used to change the color of lighting or when lighting in your scene would change it would actually alter the shadow position because certain light values were weighted high, like higher than others so that's just been normalized now so all shadows are just the same which is nice so you won't have like if there's like uh, light in the room that's changing colors your shadows won't be moving anymore which was not right there was a bug last patch where if you had transparency on your object and you tried to use the panning option under main so let me just go there main advanced there is a global pan here so pan speed that'll pan all of the textures at once and it's good in some use cases, but it had an issue last patch where transparency was basically staying in one spot and then your textures were panning and it wasn't moving the transparent spots. So that's been fixed and it should work properly now. There was a bug last patch where alpha wasn't being controlled properly for outlines. So as you can see here, there are outlines around the edges and the outlines are actually being cut off where transparent parts are. It used to work like this properly, but I did some changes last patch and I guess I just forgot. So that's working again now. Tune Specular has been entirely rewritten this patch because it was sort of hacky before and it didn't, it didn't give you full control. So it's been changed to work on this multi-slider. So the left 
the left one controls basically the inner uh it's like the it's from here to here is the gradient so the left one is the start of the gradient and the right one is the end so if you touch them together you're just going to have a really hard edge but as they spread apart you kind of get that gradient edge so the left one is like the inner circle so if i put that at zero it's going to have a smooth gradient from the center of the highlight all the way to the edge and if i put them together it's just going to be hard or if I put the left one on the left and the right one all the way to the right, you'll have a smooth gradient from the point of reflection with the sun all the way to the edge. And you can adjust the color, tint, whatever you want. And there's just a lot more control there. And you can use specular maps still. So if you wanted to use, let me see. See if there's anything in here. So you want to use like something like this, maybe. Just wanted to reflect circuitry or whatever you want. You can do that now. And the way it works with tune is that with the tune specular, rather than adjusting how shiny it is, like it does in the realistic one, your specular map literally just reflects. It's just like where it reflects and where it does not and the strength of that reflection rather than how smooth the surface is. So you have a lot more control with the tune setup than the realistic one. The realistic one kind of works. It looks better, but it works using realistic properties. So if you just want to have like a circle that reflects a texture or whatever you want, then just use tune. Last but definitely not least, I've taken the uh, dissolve shader that was previously a patreon shader and we've entirely replaced blending so now rather than having um rather than having blending where you just go from one texture to the other and it was kind of buggy there's now a fully featured like dissolve shader built into the tune shader and it won't lower performance unless you have it enabled because that's the power of keywords. And it just basically lets you do a whole lot of stuff. So have fun with that. There's another video. I've already put out a video for this shader because it's a Patreon shader. So if you just go on my YouTube channel, there's another video. I'll leave it in the description as well. But you can do a heck of a lot with the Dissolve Shader, and I look forward to seeing what people do with it. So just like a quick example, there's these uh, socks, or like stockings, are the just the Dissolve Shader. And they are just doing... They're basically... They have noise, which is... The noise texture I'm using, it's just the emission map I usually use for the socks but it's been blurred a little bit to create a gradient and then that creates this so let me just go back into the socks so then there's a detail noise that kind of just scrolls over it so you can adjust the strength of that noise or weaken it and it's basically just dissolving into the dissolve color. If the dissolve color were transparent, it would actually be cutting holes in it, like you see right here. And as you can see, there's a, there's a lot you can do with this. So if you're interested in seeing a better explanation of how to use this, I'll leave a link in the description to the dissolve tutorial. But this is a pretty huge thing. and. You can do a lot of cool stuff with it. And I think that covers everything in the Tune Shader. Let me just look over the patch notes one more time. <laughs> yeah, so this that that's everything that really affects you. There were some other changes behind the scenes. I moved a lot of files around. I deleted some stuff. So you're definitely going to have to delete your previous installation before installing this one. But that covers patch 4.0.
Again, this is available right now to all $5 plus patrons. If you want to check it out, there's a link in the description below. There's also a whole bunch of other shaders in there if you're interested. It's actually, the value is getting really high. It's like eight shaders or something for, here. well, I guess we can just look. Let me, where's my mouse? There it is. So if we go to Poyomi, Patreon, you get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You get 10 shaders for $10. It's not a bad deal at this point. And you get more of whatever's coming out. So if you have any problems or you want to talk to me or anyone um, about the shader, you can join my Discord. There's a link in the description below. It's a pretty great Discord so far, actually. Uh, there's a lot of people just helping each other. So we have general help we have shader problems patreon problems common problems there's it's mostly just a server for helping people out and it's just been getting better people are starting to learn their way around the shader and helping each other and it's a great place to be to be honest so if you're interested check that out and thank you for watching